What's up y'all, this is Igor Russia and this is the capital of the great, great, biggest country in the world. This is Moscow. And in this video, gladly, I'm not alone. I'm here with Expat American. Expat American and Josiah is gonna be joining me. We're gonna talk about nightlife in Russia. I That's heard right, with Josiah, the grumpy cameraman. I'm already tired. We're gonna compare a little bit the uh, uh, the cultural differences between nightlife and the uh, club life of America and Russia, Russia. Let's just do the West in general. Yes. Guys, subscribe to the channel. If you're new to the channel, subscribe to mine. And of course, Expat American, you can find the link in the description and in the title. Many people don't know, no one who watches this channel knows, unless they know me, I used to be a nightclub bouncer. Are you so serious? maybe I'm a little bit of an expert in this topic. I am serious. So guys, let's go. This here is the Red Square, and this is where we're gonna start off. It's uh, cold weather, just enough cold for us to maybe grab something to drink. Let's see we, where we will where we will end up, if anywhere. Beautiful place, man. I'm so happy to be here with you, even though Josiah's with us. <laughs> guys, we're gonna go to uh, the drunken street of uh, Moscow over here. We're gonna go to uh, uh, Nikolska Street. And in Russia, I've never seen so much drunks as in Moscow, Nikolska Street. Really? Yes, including St. Petersburg huh. and other places. No I joke. guess I'm not out late enough. I have too many kids. I have not noticed a lot of drunks in Russia, to be honest. We're gonna see some drunks, and I'm not referring to you guys. <laughs> I'm gonna disagree a little bit with Joe here. I've seen a fair few drunks, but I mean, he hangs out on the north side, I hang out in the south. Really? You've seen a lot of drunks? A fair few, yeah. Wow. I apologize that my new country is being a bad example for you. I wouldn't call it a bad example. They know how to have fun. <laughs> so, Nikolska it is, but before that, on this market behind me, which is right on the Red Square, right next to Putin's office, may I add, uh, there's a lot of stuff for a kid stuff activity. But did you know, guys, I was offered there literally real alcohol unofficially. The guy said, hey, you want to, ah, this is for kids. You want something else? Then he poured actually some like mixed uh, gl uh, glint wine with vodka. Oh, someone working the kiosk just wanted yeah, yeah, to yeah. be your friend? Yeah, then he was like, yeah, let's drink to Russia. And then he was called. <laughs> can you introduce me to this friend? Yes, we can. You guys have to be keep kept entertained. We're going to go to Nikolska to see some club life. And it's like a tourist destination as well. That's the investigation. Well. That's the hope. We're going to see what Russia has to offer. Indeed. Let's go. You hang out in Bover on South Side on the back streets. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, I'm a father of five, so, you know, I'm usually home before the young people start having a good time. I love this New Year's market they put in, in Red Square here. It's so beautiful. We are now on Nikolska streets and this is busy, busy tourist street. But most of all, I think this is the party street. What is the basics? in the West for like club life in general. And you specifically, you've seen it all as a bouncer. So what's it all about? In America, yeah, I mean, I was a bouncer um, for a club in Hollywood, California, in Los Angeles. It's pretty much because of my size. You know, I didn't really have any other experience. So I just looked intimidating. Um, and what I know from growing up in America, spending over 40 years there, it's probably what you'd expect that what you've seen in a Hollywood movie. You know, you've got restaurants that serve alcohol, you know, draft beer and stuff like that. You've got nicer restaurants that serve mixed drinks and you've got bars where people would go and just drink, you know, uh, something like an Irish pub maybe in America, although it doesn't have to be Irish, but that type of feeling, you know, hole in the wall type places like what you might see Wolverine at. Of course, there are like club clubs where you're going and you're dancing to music and you're getting drinks and they'll have like light food appetizers, maybe. Um, and I assume that Russia is the same way or Moscow is the same way. So uh, I know that St. Petersburg is the center of Russian money. So in Moscow, especially, how, how exclusive can you get if you're like that type of person with a lot of wealth. And how low can you get as well? <laughs> so, I mean, I'm a married guy. My wife and I go out on dates once a week and I'm from America. And it, it appears to me that Moscow has pretty much everything. I mean, Josiah and I did uh, a video on Mexico and Moscow. 
and there were like four, maybe five places to get Mexican food. So we went to three of them. Uh, we went to two of them and tried to go to a third. Oh yeah, the third was in. a club, and we didn't want to pay the cover charge. So the like so there is just there is a club inside. with a cover charge here I, uh, for a Mexican several. club. Yeah, so that Not is a Mexican thing, clubs, and that yeah. that's so uh, just like in America. I mean, there's an Irish pub right around the corner. I love it. It's probably too expensive, locals would say, but and and it looks. Um, very stereotypical so an irishman might might feel like it's a, an exaggerated version of of a irish pub but i liked it i thought it was cool the thing is though if you want drinks and you want to dance and party and stuff i don't know about winter but in the summer you don't even have to go to a club you just go to a, a street with a university onto it back when i was living in the dorms pretty much every summer night i'd have trouble going to bed because there'd be people out on the street partying and dancing and listening to music and drinking What type of uh, party community is in, uh, in student life in Moscow, in Russia? I mean, same with any university anywhere. There are people who love to party and people who don't. I, fortunately, was in the latter category, so I got to sleep in most days and play games all night. But there were a few clubs near my university, and even one club run, I don't know if it was run by my university, but it's kind of the officially endorsed one. And most students would go there. And I was invited to it a few times. From what I saw walking by it, because it is a part of the, the campus, it's your typical club. You know, you've got drinks, you've got uh, a place to dance. I was surprised that they had those, um, what are they called, hookahs? Shisha? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they had those things that you can smoke the, the flavorful smoke on. That was new to me. I, I, I never associated that with clubs in my mind, but I it's guess It's like a, a glass tower that you, you smoke yeah, like, like you some do. sort of thing yeah, out of? Yeah. Okay. So, well then, Josiah, tell us, man. Let me challenge you. You're from America. You've been in Russia for almost five years. In regards to nightlife, is there any difference at all? Uh, for me, no. <laughs> the only thing that really surprised me was that there was shishas in some of the clubs here. And a lot of the clubs here. Well, there's a difference. Yeah. They, they look like you're on Lord of the Rings, something like that? These things that they're smoking? I wouldn't say Lord of the Rings. <laughs> what would you say? I don't know, um, Blade Runner or something. <laughs> Blade Runner, that's good. <laughs> Moscow is like New York City. These are international cities. They have almost anything you could think of. Vegas is a smaller place and it's more manufactured. It's in the middle of the desert. And they have hotels, which are also casinos, which are made to look like different countries from around the world. It's like Disney for adults. I have nothing to add other than DC is the best and I think St. Petersburg is the closest thing to it in Russia. I like St. Petersburg, it's like an artsy city. Yeah. It's like, it's like, it's if, like the queen of Russia. If Moscow was like a picture of a city, St. Petersburg is like a painting of a city. It's very nice to relax in. Ah, it's a good way to put it, I like that. Here's a good example of what we're talking about. This is an Irish pub over right behind me. And there's there seems to be Irish pubs everywhere in Moscow. It's uh, popular, I would say. So what's up? I've, I've noticed that also in uh, in St. Petersburg, the Irish pubs are popping out and you, you notice the same, but why is, what's the reason? What's wrong with Russian drinking that they must bring a different drinking culture, pop culture? Or Irish pop culture into the country or is it like organic development that people just like it? I don't know. What's well, the I, I think that um, that part of the world is known for beer and so Moscow is an international city. They can have anything they want and people feel like it's kind of cool to eat and drink at an Irish pub just like you might want to eat at a French restaurant or if you were in another country and you want some vodka you might want the place to have a Russian name. I mean, every place has its own famous alcohol. Every land is known for its special alcohol. But every time I'm drinking, I can't help but think of Irish drinking songs. And there's no other country that has <laughs> drinking songs that just immediately pop into my head. So yeah, I think it's just naturally that Irish pubs are more popular. I gotta say, that's a very good point, both of you, because uh, uh, in Russia, you drink only with food. You don't drink. You're alcoholic if you do not eat zakuska with beer with dr or other drinks. So nah. this actually falls in into the line quite nicely. So yeah, yeah. yeah. but they do have the different uh, atmosphere which Russian bars usually don't have. It's a different thing. 
there's a Soviet thing, by the way, in St. Petersburg, so I don't know about here, but to drink hard liquor, you have to go to, not to the pub, even sure, they sell it, but you have to go to Rymuchne. Rymka means like a shot glass. Huh. Rymka. So you go to a special place w- which serves this, and bars, you drink maybe more beer and stuff, or restaurants, you buy a bottle of vodka. Right, right, yeah. right. I mean, wine, that would be what? Like France and maybe Spain yeah. and Italy. But then beer is going to be like Ireland to Germany, that part of the world. Yeah. So- the private party. Okay, this is a bit off topic. This is not a club or a bar, but like I was saying, Moscow's international. It's okay, ladies. There it says Beverly Hills Diner. So you've got an American restaurant as well as an Irish one. Here's a restaurant, like a fancy restaurant. So maybe we can see through the window. Oh my God. This is where you, this is where you'd get like any alcohol you want. Does it say no ribs? Oh, cool, rib. Uh, this place is called No Fish, by the way. Oh, ah, so it's a meat restaurant. You can see through the window, you got wine glasses. You know, you've got a bar right there, so you can get whatever mixed drinks you want. Those people look like a mafia bosses. I'm on film them. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Chinese, so never offend the Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> so I like this city walk, but you do not. I like not. city walk. I don't like uh, Nikolskaya after a few times. I definitely don't. So I, this is Nikolskaya. Yeah. And That's the city it, walk continues, but it, you have to turn and go under the street. So we're getting a good example of Moscow nightlife, like right in the center on the street we're on and now on this street, which I don't know the name. And over here, it looks like we have the entrance to a club. So does this look like a nightclub in your city? You got stickers and ugly paints on purpose and brick walls. You got kegs here. It's on purpose, a nice hole in the wall. It's nice, man. I mean, if you're looking for this sort of thing, right? Maybe they're closed? Oh, cool. Okay, so this is more of a, um, this is more of a restaurant. But you got bottled beers, canned beers, bottles of wine. You got, um, you got taps, you know, so you can get draft beer. And you have a nice view out the window. You know, so the so it now it now turns. So I don't know why. I guess it kind of organically came about and like maybe 5 to 10 years ago the city of Moscow decided to block this area from cars. So you've got three streets basically where you can't drive that become city walks and they all connect but it makes kind of like a z form through the center of moscow a z shape it's pretty quiet actually for the summer day (laughs) it's what it's the dead of winter of course it's quiet they act differently when it's cold Uh, yeah yes people drink less (laughs) Actually, on the subject of cold, hold this microphone. My hands are freezing. I I wouldn't say they drink less. If anything, they probably drink more, just inside. So I remember during summers, surprisingly, it gets pretty hot out here to the point where if I don't have anything to do that day, I'll just stay in my room and wait for the sun to go down to go shopping. And it looks like people agree with me because when the sun does go down, people go out on the street and they start drinking and partying and everything like that outside. And it is loud and I'm thinking. Winter, you. however, you people out? drink inside and they party inside. And now I am done and you can talk about your Sean Connery so, pub. Here's another Irish pub, Sean O'Neill, and we've got live music starting just as we walk up here. This is one thing I've noticed about Russia that is different from where my part of the world is. There's live music everywhere in Moscow. Most of the time I don't really like it, but I do remember when I moved here, in this exact spot was a, a, a starting band that was playing Lincoln Park. That was a good choice. So let, let's, let's check it out, man. After you, sir. Yeah, After you, we will, Igor. We will drink it. We need beer from here. This place actually has an alligator on the wall, so I feel at home. See, I'm a Floridian. There's an alligator on the wall. I really feel at home here. 
So I definitely feel like I'm in Ireland up here in this basement restaurant. I'm pretty sure I've been to the bar before. Yeah. Probably. Bar. He wants to sit at the bar. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always having to translate for it. He's just used to it now. Yeah. Definitely been here before with Joe. Every day when in Russia, it's good for your health to have a little bit of vodka. Or there's Shirley Temple for uh, Joe. Because he's uh, keeping his promise of non-alcoholic. I'll tell you, I take one month out of the year where I don't drink alcohol because I heard that it only takes about two or three weeks in alcohol for your liver to be like a baby's liver all over again. So I figure while I'm getting older, it's good that I, I do this once a year. And so this is part of my one month. And while he's saying all that, the real men are going to raise the toast. Our nice flavorless beer. The perfect Russian beer, probably the cheapest. Tastes like nothing. This is great. I'm serious, and I'm serious. <laughs> well, and I, I poke a lot of fun, but it is it is good. Like it's not bad. Like I'll definitely drink this over nothing, over water, I guess, as long as it's not too much. Um, I will say though, I do prefer it when it has some sort of other flavor with it. We can ask if they have like a strawberry to I drop like into that, the yeah. beer. <laughs> well, ironically, I'd well, like. Well, if that. you're okay with this, why would you learn to drink it with sugar? If you like it like that, it's better for you. I think that yellow, plain tasting beer is the best beer, personally. I, if you're happy with complacency, go oh, ahead. You, you too. Yeah, oh, fantastic, I, man. That's what I said. Uh, finally, definitely. I met a guy who's like me who has my what do taste you mean, in beer. Finally. It's all of you guys. No, no, no. no, no, no. Draft no, beer no. is popular. Most men want dark beer. Yeah. And they want, they now want it's, interesting. And now it's in. Both of those are equally boring. All right. Or draft. Is it draft beer? Craft beer? Draft no, beer. So this is draft. and Well, it's all draft, meaning it's, yes, it's this. Yeah. Um, uh, how do you say it in Russian? Tap? Um, Razlivnoye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Razlivnoye. Razlivnoye. So guys, we showed you a little bit of the, well, it's today's Sunday actually, so you didn't see all the drunks that I promised you guys. And check it out. Spicy. Shame on you. That looks way <laughs> better than what I got. It probably is not. Let's see how Russian non-alcoholic drinks uh, look and taste like. Ah. Tastes like lemonade with a little bit of strawberry in it, which is what I asked for. Actually, we asked for it. We said, uh, give him a uh, children's lemonade. <laughs> Josiah, uh, about prices in Russia, how much beer is going to cost for you in a bar? Or I know these places are going to up the cost of whatever I buy by a lot. If I want to drink, I can do so in the comfort of my own home. And if I do so in the comfort of my own home, I can buy it from a grocery store. And if I buy it from a grocery store, I could spend 80 rubles on a bottle of beer. Oh. And if you're getting it from the grocery store, they have just basic, basic beer. And they have other flavors too, of course, like cherry or strawberry, which I love. But I mean, it's still a lot cheaper than in bars or anywhere else. You can get beer for 50 cents for 50 rubles as well. Like, okay, Russian beer, 50 rubles, no, easily. Zhugulevskaya, the basic Russian beer. Uh, Soviet, uh, very basic, 50, less than 50 even. I like 50. keep an eye out for it. I do appreciate buying it at a grocery store, not just because I can have it at home, but because it tastes better in a bottle than from the tap. But in bars, basically, um, okay, we're now in Moscow center, we're gonna show you how much did it cost in a bit. But uh, I guess uh, in typical places, not too touristy, uh, I would say it cost maybe, um, well, up to 300 rubles for a beer, it's okay price from a restaurant, I would say. Mojitos. Mojitos always cost like 550 or more. Yeah, and that's you're speaking in the Moscow terms, which is basically a little bit more than anywhere else, or even or a lot more. But uh, a shot of basic Russian uh, vodka, 50 grams, which is the minimum. Uh, up to up 200 up to 300 and yes vodka can be cheaper than beer mead or medavuha in russian mead costs roughly the same as beer or maybe a little pricier but yeah. overall the same cost it's just harder to find and from the store grocery stores well it's all different depends what you get how much etc but you can get the best russian beer beluga for 10 bucks a bottle half a liter bottle 
So um, 100 rubles is about a dollar, basically. Yeah. It comes up and down. Um, so if I'm going to the grocery store to buy bottles of beer for my house, if it's 60 rubles, that's nice, you know? But, you know, sometimes it's 100 rubles. That's for me, because I'm buying the, the yellow beer, the, the plain beer. At a restaurant, you know, I, it might, I might spend 500 rubles for the same thing as a draft, right? But that's another interesting fact. America doesn't have the draft beer like at a kiosk. They don't, they don't have that. If oh, you want draft beer yeah, in America, yeah. it's at a restaurant yeah. like this, or it's a bottle from the grocery store. They don't have drafts that you can fill up a big plastic container, like in Russia. Yeah, in, uh, in Russia, uh, especially in suburbs, in, in St. Petersburg, I'm sure here as well, I'm 100% sure, every uh, apartment, your apartment building has this Razilivnaya, uh, uh, like a kiosk with, with draft beer, yeah. So, uh, and that's a little bit more expensive than uh, from a store, but they're fresh. You know it's fresh beer, it's great. You know the difference from the fruit. Yeah, I know, the bottled one tastes better. Tastes, how honestly, could a bottle taste better? I don't know how. Do I think I just enjoy it more. Do you know where the stuff comes that's in it, a bottle? It's more. It, it, Josiah is, is trolling. Overnight. You put oil now on you're it, trolling. You're trolling. All right, guys. So, can I eat this? Yeah, it's uh, it's mint. It's good. Want to say hi to uh, Wild Siberian, our friend from Russian Siberia, who is currently at this moment at least far away, but he's gonna come back. But we want to say hi, don't we? Or, I'll think about it. <laughs> Overall, I don't know, did we get a lot of information about uh, Russian drinking culture? I think we did a uh, good uh, perspective from the Western point of view. Yeah, I think if you're a Western and you're not familiar with Moscow, we gave a good overview of what nightlife looks like in Moscow. And of course, and what I wanted to say earlier, that in Moscow, everything is possible if you have the money. So basically, if, uh, if you want, you can find... Uh, inappropriate places or uh, you can find uh, very luxurious places with the most awesome views you, whatever you want there is in Russia there's money talks and BS walks that's how they say that's how it is in Russia I think money rules all right guys uh, this has been a, a update for Moscow nightlife bar bar crawl bar pub crawl and uh, it's been awesome day uh, today with uh, expert American and Josiah uh, we're gonna continue drinking guys and meanwhile, please uh, hit the uh, like button and subscribe to my channel And if you're still haven't subscribed to expert American click the title or the subscribe sub, uh, The description and follow expert American as well. He follow does a me. Yes, and you can come over We just posted a video with eager at a Ukrainian restaurant in Moscow I know you guys like him so see him there right now I think there might be more drinking out there. But yes, see you guys in the next video from Moscow with love. Bye-bye. From my point of view and my communities, my nightlife communities, the more money you have means you can order nicer food delivered to your place while you're playing games. Whereas I couldn't order anything and I had to make my own food. Oh, so you're just a nerdy video gamer. So why would we bring you on this trip? That's what I'm asking. <laughs> You're offending me, everybody. You're a, you're offending. I think it's the novelty of having a bottle like in your hand, the shape of it, and the the cap to pass off. The taste, how honestly, could a bottle taste better? I don't know how. Do I think you know I just where the stuff it more. comes? That's in it, a bottle. It's more, it, it comes from that. It's, it's just like old. McDonald's French fries. They're better after a day. Same for curry. What? Curry is better McDonald's after a day. French fries are better after yes. a day. You're yes. ridiculous. Pizza too. Pizza is better when you order it. Josiah is, is trolling. Over it. Everybody wants to go home. I want to go home. <laughs> I remember during summers, it surprisingly it gets pretty hot out here to the point where if I don't have anything to do that day, I'll just stay in my room and wait for the sun to go down to go shopping. And it looks like people agree with me because when the sun does go down, people go out on the street and they start drinking and partying and everything like that outside and it is loud and I'm happy for them but I wish they'd shut up. <laughs>